Hello Violets! In this weapon review, we'll be taking a look at the Nomanus Mark VI Surge 4 Staff, aka the Chain Lightning Staff. We'll be exploring this staff in great detail, so if you're the type of person who loves to understand how something works through and through, this will be a video you'll probably like. So here are 5 things you need to know about the Nomanus Surge Staff. Number 1. Damage Profiles Before I go any further into this section, I just want to say that there's going to be quite a bit of numbers involved here. So if you aren't interested in seeing the number breakdowns for how this stuff actually works, feel free to skip ahead to the timestamp on the screen. For the rest of you who are staying, I'm going to do my best to explain my findings because the numbers that you read on the weapon's damage profile are, for the most part, meaningless. I know this because I did a lot of testing. Like, a lot a lot of testing. I wanted to know what the actual damage range of the surge staff was, since we know the damage it deals depends on how long you charge it up for. So, to find out, I attacked different enemies in a Psychinium with different charge levels and brain-busted it to see how much health the enemy had left. Whatever the difference was, would be the damage dealt by the Surge Staff. I did this about 600 times to get enough data to ensure that the numbers here would be reasonably reflective of what is actually going on. Also, I did this with 4 warp charges throughout my testing just to help speed up the process since I wouldn't have to wait for warp charges to expire. So if you want to see what the actual base damage would be, divide everything by 1.16. Now, let's get into the numbers from my testing, starting with the most obvious one. The Surge Staff is very strong against armored enemies like Flak and Carapace, but suffers greatly against everything else. Here's a table of its output against the most common enemies you'll likely use the Surge Staff on. Take a moment to pause here to look at the table if you'd like to. Looking at the armor difference row, you'll see that the Surge Staff only deals 34% of its damage it would deal to flag armor against unarmored enemies at minimum charge. In other words, the Surge Staff deals 66% less damage against unarmored enemies compared to flag. This difference widens even more when we start comparing fully charged attacks, dropping to about 75% less damage. Part of the reason for this lies in the charge difference multiplier, that is, how many times more damage a fully charged attack deals compared to a minimum charge attack for its respective armor type. Even after hundreds of kills logged and analyzed, unarmored enemies simply have a lower multiplier than flag. The other part of this lies in how the surge staff actually deals damage. This is the main reason why the damage profile numbers are pointless. I'm going to show you a sample range of damage numbers for both minimum and maximum charge damage against flag. See if you can spot something off. Do you see it? Here's the answer. The surge staff does not deal consistent damage across charge levels, even at maximum charge. These numbers tell me that the Surge Staff actually deals damage based on a lower and upper limit. What our charge time actually does is move both the lower and upper limits upwards, increasing the minimum and maximum damage we can deal. That's why even at full charge, the damage numbers can vary quite a bit. I'd even go so far as to say that the spread is actually wider for flag armor as compared to unarmored, which helps explain why the gap for the armor difference actually widens when we compare maximum charge attacks. From the table, we can also see that the crit damage multipliers are not the same for the different armor classes. Crit damage only increases the damage by a measly 20% against flag, but does much more against unarmored, increasing the damage dealt by about 70% on average. So, with my findings laid bare, what does this all mean? It means three things. Number one, it's technically impossible to calculate a hard breakpoint for the search staff, since its damage moves between a lower and upper bound that is dependent on your charge time. The best we can do is calculate how many average attacks it takes to kill something. Number two, crit damage is not weighted equally. While crits do deal more damage to both armored classes, crits on unarmored targets have a much higher multiplier than on flag, which means it's more valuable against unarmored. Number three, minimum charge attacks are still useful against flag enemies. You can more often than not two-shot a scab shooter or even a scab bruiser with minimum charged attacks. However, this is not the same for unarmored targets. It will take you an average of 7 minimum charge attacks to kill a drag shooter and you need 8 to kill a drag bruiser. You're much better off using a fully charged attack to kill unarmored enemies rather than spamming the minimum charge attacks if you want to kill something in a reasonable amount of time. Oh, Alright, that was a lot of information to convey and take in. I hope you're still with me after all of that. The next sections of the video won't be as math or number heavy, I promise. So if you're ready, let's move on. Number 2. Chain Lightning Mechanics The Surge Staff's Chain Lightning has numerous mechanics attached to it. First, it has a primary target search range of 20 meters. The Surge Staff will try to acquire targets within 20 meters of a small area of your aim. You'll know you've acquired a target because there will be sparks of lightning being emitted from them. The second point is that the Surge Staff can chain up to 6 targets. 
After hitting your primary target, the Chain Lightning will continue to find the nearest 5 targets to chain to and will lose damage for each target hit. Here's a table to show you how much damage you can expect to lose when chaining between targets. As you can see, the Surge Staff loses a lot of damage when it chains to enemies other than the primary target. After hitting the Scab Bruiser, the Scab Stalker, which was the second target of the chain, took 65% less damage than the primary target. By the time the chain reaches the third target and beyond, it would have lost well over 80% of its damage already. This is a pretty steep damage loss, which makes the Surge Staff not the greatest when it comes to clearing adds compared to the other staff, even against Flag Armor. Keep in mind that each target will receive damage based on its own lower and upper damage bounds, as mentioned in the damage profile section. This means the Chain Lightning damage can deal different numbers based on whether a target hits a high or a low roll on the damage bound after accounting for damage loss. However, the third point kind of makes up for this a tiny bit. The Surge Staff can hit up to two primary targets, that's right, unlike how you expect Chain Lightning to work from like Dota or any other games that has Chain Lightning where it only hits one target and chains to others, the Surge Staff can actually hit two primary targets as long as they are within the 20 meter acquisition range. So ideally, you like to always be chaining up to two primary targets to maximize your damage. Number 3. Combat Tactics Because of how the Surge Staff acquires targets, it offers you one of the most unique combat tactics, Peak Casting. Once you've acquired your primary target and cast your Chain Lightning, you'll enter your channeling animation, which lasts around 1.5 seconds, maybe slightly less. In this window of time, you no longer need to maintain line of sight of your target, meaning you can retreat into the safety of cover to finish the channel. Doing this allows you to not only avoid getting shot at while you are channeling, but also allows you to direct your attention elsewhere without letting go of your CC, giving Surge Staff Psychers the greatest awareness potential to look out for other threats and your teammates while keeping your targets stunned. As mentioned before, the Surge Staff can also be used to spam minimum charge attacks repeatedly to continuously lock a handful of targets down. This is particularly useful on groups of Crushers, Bulwarks, Ragers and Maulers. This technique favours CC over damage and pairs nicely with the next tactic, Channel Quelling. As mentioned in my previous video, activating Psykinetic's Wrath does not interrupt your channeling. As such, you can push your Surge Staff to the limit and get a life-saving stun off and, while channeling your Chain Lightning, activate Psykinetic's Wrath to quell your peril to prevent yourself from overloading while keeping key targets stunned. This technique is very important to know because it allows you to continue maintaining Warp Flurry, letting you keep the casting buff for another 2 or 3 casts. Number 4. Build Recommendations Now that we've learned how the Surge Staff works and how it outputs its damage, we've reached a point where we can start to build our Staff. In my opinion, there are two philosophies when it comes to building the Surge Staff. The first is to lean into what it's strong at, amplifying its strength against armoured enemies to yield maximum devastation against them. The second is to try and balance out the Staff, making it more usable under most circumstances. This means you give up some power to balance out its weakness against unarmoured enemies. I have personally tested both build philosophies and can say with confidence that either works fine. It really depends on what you want the Surge Staff to accomplish. So, let's get into the blessing sections. Unfortunately, as you can see, the Surge Staff has a tiny pool of 5 blessings, of which only 3 are meaningful. Those blessings are Warp Flurry, Harnessing the Warp, and Focus Channeling. For our first build, we lean into the first philosophy of maximizing the Surge Staff's strength in Flag Armor Destruction. This build is the Lightning Rod build. For where you see flag enemies, you see targets just waiting to be struck by a warp lightning. This build will make use of warp flurry for the incremental DPS as you chain cast, making even lower charge attacks more and more lethal as you chain attacks together. Harnessing the warp will be your next blessing of choice. Even though crit damage isn't particularly powerful against flag, we want to build as much damage potential as possible when we're dealing with flag armor. Unlike my other videos, for the third staff, we're going to be talking about perks for each build because of the different build philosophies we've chosen. As we're leaning into destroying flag enemies, we'll want to obviously take plus flag damage and plus elite damage as well, since most elites are also flag enemies. We don't go for plus crit charts because crit damage isn't as valuable in this build. Instead, this combination offers you a plus 37.5% more damage against maulers, flag ragers, gunners, and shotgunners. This gives you the potential to even two shot a primary target mauler if you roll high on the damage, even without critting. Our second build philosophy is about balancing the Surge Staff's weakness against unarmored enemies, namely Drag Shooters and Bruisers. This build is the Critical Storm build because it focuses on pulling up the damage potential on Drag enemies as much as possible. Even though critical hits are worth more against unarmored enemies, it is preferable to take a higher tier of Warp Flurry over harnessing the Warp, simply because being able to reach maximum charge damage offers the greatest increase in DPS against Drag enemies. Ideally, you would like to have both of these blessings at tier 4, but if you can only pick one to be tier 4 in this build, go with Warp Flurry for the consistency in damage output as you cast. 
This also applies to the lightning rod build, but it isn't as dire since even minimum charge attacks work reasonably well against flag enemies. For perks, you'll want plus unarmored damage for the crucial damage improvement against dregs, and we'll also want plus crit chance for the added chances of dealing more meaningful damage when we crit. While you won't nearly feel as strong as the lightning rod build, you find you aren't nearly as handicapped when you are in a mission that consists entirely of drag enemies. This build is best if you don't want to feel like a CC bot and want to be able to contribute some decent damage in drag only missions. The third build is a variation of the two builds combined that focuses totally on consistent damage output without relying on RNG. This is the true balance build. As always, Warp Flurry is a must as it adds consistent damage output as you chain cast. Because we want to take advantage of always being able to cast fully charged attacks, we will opt for focus channeling instead. This blessing ensures that even in the worst of times, when you're getting shot at and your toughness breaks, you will always be able to cast your attacks and maintain Warp Flurry. Sure, you give up the added critical chance of harnessing the warp, but since crits are only really valuable against unarmored, half the potential of the blessing is kind of wasted. That being said, you can take Harnessing the Warp if you don't value the added consistency and want to go for greater damage potential. For perks, we'll take both plus flag damage and unarmored damage, giving us the best of both worlds when it comes to dealing with the two main threats. Honestly, because the blessing pool is so limited for this staff, you'll probably end up with some variation of the three builds shown here no matter what you mix and match with. I really wish that there was more blessings available for the surge staff. Number 5. Psyker Build Pairing Because Psyker staffs are tied very closely with their build, I have a section here that will offer some build crafting suggestions for the surge staff. How you want to build your surge staff will always start with the question, what do you want it to accomplish? If you want to maximize the damage potential of the staff and deal heavy, fully charged attacks, I would suggest you try this build. This is the build being used in the background gameplay as well. On the other hand, if you want a more consistent casting and CC support build, perhaps you can consider this one instead. This is my preferred build when I'm going into a high intensity, damnation, shock trooper gauntlet game. While this build offers you an incredible amount of support for your team, it is only as good as the team itself. That being said, if you want to have a build that is more flexible, you can consider this one. With that, we've reached the end of the video. As you can see, the surge staff appears very simple and straightforward on the surface, but it actually has numerous interesting things about it that aren't so obvious at a glance. I hope this video was able to impart some useful knowledge to you and help your gameplay. Thank you all for watching and I will see you all in the next one. Violets.